Hello, welcome. We've got a spreadsheet here that I know might look overwhelming when you first look at it, but there's a lot of information in here that will help us figure out the answer to our question. And that question is, when we're looking at a car and we're considering buying a vehicle and we're thinking of leasing and buying it, what is better? Is it better to buy or lease and renew your car every three years? So if you bought it to sell it and then get another one or with a lease to literally renew your lease every three years on a similar type of new car, or is it better to buy it and hold on to it for as long as possible? Now, the other part of this is that it might actually depend on the prices and the way the car depreciates. And there's a lot of variables here that we've been thinking about that go into this calculation. That might mean that you get a different answer than I do for this car. Because I have an answer for the CRV. I have an answer about which method will certainly save you the most money over time. And I should also say that there's no one right way to buy or get a vehicle. Just because one option is less expensive doesn't mean another option isn't worthwhile. And that's also something we discussed in class. So this is not meant to inform you if you should lease, buy new, buy used, or renew the car every three years or hold on to it for as long as possible. That's not what this is about. This is a way to quantify the cost so that you can compare your option and decide what's best for you. So we're going to make this spreadsheet. We'll do it right now. And the first thing we're going to do is make a copy of the template. So get your copy going. Click make a copy. And make sure you share it with me so that I can edit it and share it with your classmates so they can review your work. So click that share button and change those settings. I need to be able to edit these spreadsheets quickly so I can help you. And then over here, please put your name at the front so we know that this is now yours and you can delete the word template. Get rid of that word template. You don't need that. And then you're all set. So go ahead, pause the video and do that. Change the share settings and change the title. All right, now you're ready to go. And there's a couple of standard things we're gonna fill out here. Let's just fill this out, 36 months. We're going to assume that's the, that's the length of the loan, and that can be changed, but I'm going to keep it to 36 months, and I recommend you do the same. Okay, so next we have the time period using the vehicle, and that's in months. Well, this shouldn't be here. I'm going to delete that. We don't need that analysis, and if you have that, you can delete it. Then for the purchase price, it depends on what car you're going to choose. Taxes, okay. So a lot of these blanks here we're going to fill out together. Some of them will stay blank, uh, but that's really what we're doing. We're filling in these blanks. The first thing you want to do is look at our buying options. We can lease it, buy it new, or buy it used. And in order to get some data in here, we have to pick a car. So the first thing I would do is go to the Honda website and just pick something that you think you want to analyze. I suggest picking a car that you think fits your interest or lifestyle. For me, I think the fastest way to do this is just to click maybe on the car, but then you have to go through and build it, like you have to pick all the options, so just bear with me. So I chose the CRV. I chose this model. That's the one I wanted to look at. If You you can't choose the same exact CRV. You can choose a different one if you want. I'm going to click Build, so this is the EX. And for most of the options, I skip over it. I just want to make sure I have all-wheel drive, so I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go to my Summary. Notice I'm just clicking somewhere. I'm going to skip all these other steps here. You can choose these things and play around with it. But if I go to Summary and go to Payment Estimator, I can then see some costs. So go ahead, pause the video, pick your car, build it, click on Summary, and then go to Payment and Estimator, and you'll get to this screen right here. Now, once you're on this screen, you'll have data. It'll start to fill out data for you. It'll give you a suggested down payment. So this is for the lease. So I'm going to go to my table here and type in $32.50 for my down payment. And I fact, um, I think the last time I did this, I'm going to go back to my sheet here. They gave me a different number, $27.50. So I'm going to put $32.50 there. And then I'll change some of my numbers. But I want these to be consistent. I'm kind of doing a self-check on my work. And then I'm going to, this is going to be the same down payment for buying new. So those two will be the same. And also what will be the same for both leasing it new or buying it new will be the destination and handling fees. That's just a way of saying shipping and handling, basically. And you can see that under here in the summary. So if I go here to summary, 
you'll see destination handling fees are 1,175. It's gonna be the same for both, 1,175. And it'll stay zero for the used car. We'll assume that there's no shipping and handling with that. And for the purchase price, I can maybe change this title to the MSRP for the new, but I'm just saying it's the suggested price of the car. In this case, it's the MSRP as built, right? Because we've we've put some exceptions on it. So it's 3535. That's what it is. And that's actually the same leasing and buying. So now the taxes will fill out automatically. It'll just take 4% of whatever purchase price you put in there. And the APR, it depends on what they list it at. Now, for leasing, they're not going to give an APR. APR is an interest rate based on the total cost of the car, but you can't calculate that with the lease because you're not even paying off the full car. So I don't even know what that means, really. Like this $249 per month, that's not going to amount to, uh, that's not going to give us the ability to find the APR. But if we click on Finance, notice here, the terms of the finance, you can change it. It might make your calculations more complicated. I suggest you pick 36 months. So there it is. And then now it'll run the numbers. It's going to estimate $758 per month, $4,000 due at signing because you have a down payment plus that cost per month. That's what they want up front. But I'm going to list the down payment. I think I have that already. $3,250, I have it. And the APR is at 0%. So it's actually an interesting time to do this project. That's the interest on the loan, and it does not get lower than 0%. It's actually a pretty great deal. Usually a low APR would be like 0.9 or 1.9, but 0% is pretty amazing. So let's go here. So for buying, you've got a 0% APR. So with the monthly cost during time period of the loan, I'm just saying, what are you paying um, each month during these 36 months here? Now, the lease is blank, so we're gonna actually rely on the website to do that because they're not revealing the formula they use to calculate that number. So we've got 249 right now, but I'm gonna change it to 15,000 miles. And then I get my 273, and that's what I had before here. So I have something different. I had 288 per, um, per time, per, per month. So that's actually different. I wonder why that's happening on the website. But it's an approximation. So here we'll say, well, we'll go back here, and here's 273 per month. It's probably because the down payment is higher. Let me just check that real quick. Before for a down payment, I had 2750. So if I enter 2750, let's see if it recalculates to the same number. Yeah, there's that, that 288. So the, the lower the down payment, the higher the monthly payment, right? So it was 288, but now we've got um, a down payment of 3250. So 3250, hit enter, and boom. There's our 273. So I'm going to actually fill it out, 273. The other numbers here will be automatically calculated using the PMT formula on Google Sheets. And that will also mirror what you see on the website. So let's just check that out. So here, 3250 for your down payment. You can see it's saying 758 per month, which is pretty much exactly what we have right here. This is a more precise number. And if you change the APR, that will also change the payments. So you can actually use this spreadsheet to model different car payments. But right now it's at zero. And this should be dollars. So I'm gonna fix that. I don't, I don't like that. Boom. Okay. And actually, let's do <laughs> I, I need to be consistent. So currency, number, and we'll go to this. All right. So now we have most of this filled out, just like we did before. You just want to make sure you paste in here what kind of car you're buying. So in my case, I've got this information. It's the three scenarios. Notice I've chosen 2021. You might get a 2022 in there, depending on what year you're doing this project, whatever the newest year is for that model. I chose a 2018 used car because that's three years behind the newest car, and that's also the time period of the loan, but you can choose a different year for a used car. Don't go too far back, though. It'll make some of the other data we're getting difficult to get. You also want the links in here to connect to the web page that you're using for your car. That'll help others check your work, it'll help me check your work. So all you have to do is, like when you're on this page, kind of grab this. It's on finance right now, and I think that'll actually link to it directly. So I go to financing, which means buying, go to hit command or control K, and then paste in that link. 
And then I'm going to toggle over here to leasing. And I'm going to grab this le link right here so that people can check my work directly. Control Command K and then paste the link in. And now, mo actually, most of the table is filled out. Um, we want to also, we're going to fill out some other data here in a moment, but I want to get my used car in there. So the used car, I think the easiest way to do this is to go to the Honda Certified Pre-Owned website. And you can toggle with the settings over here. It's important that whatever used car you're looking at is as close to the new car as possible. So once this loads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down over here. You can see it, it's already pop, populating with CRVs. I'm going to pick the CRV, and then under the model, I'm going to pick the um, all-wheel drive EX. So I scroll down, there it is. And then it'll automatically populate right what I'm looking for. In my case, I think I chose that one, 23995. No, it must have been a different one, 24995. So I've I've got the link, and that's why it's so useful. Whatever car you find, again, copy it. There it is. And then go over to your spreadsheet, to your link, Control Command K, and then paste it in. So now we can go back and check your work. Now for the used car, it's just a little bit different, the format. You want to click Calculate Monthly Payment, and you can get everything here that you need. Right now it's got a down payment of 2500 and that might be what I had before, yeah, 2500 So at least that's the same. So I'll type that in, 2500 By same, I mean not the different. <laughs> These numbers aren't changing by the hour, right? This is the same as what I got before. There's no destination handling fees, but the purchase price, we need to enter that. It's the vehicle price, 24995 So it's not an MSRP anymore. It's not the manufacturer's rec recommendation. It's based on a, a price they chose. So um, here it is, 24,995. So now, you know, it's the tables, the graph down here is adjusting automatically as we go. We want to enter our APR though. Our APR depends um, where you're going and how long the loan is. That usually might change it. But we have it set here at 3.5, so I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to just enter 3.5. Okay. So I think everything is good to go. Now we need to start testing some things. This right here is telling us, okay, wow, leasing per month during the loan is so much cheaper. Buying it new is the highest, and then right in the middle is buying it used. So it's because you're paying off the car here in three years. It's so high, you're actually buying it. Whereas leasing, you're just renting. Now the total paid during the time period of the loan just means for those 36 months, if you're paying 274, right, that you do that for 36 months, plus you've got taxes, plus you've got shipping and handling, plus a down payment, put all that together and that's what you're paying. And that's, that's what the formulas here are doing. It's taking I2 times C2. So I2 is the monthly cost of a loan times C2, which is the time period of the loan. And then it adds in E, F, and G, which are taxes, shipping and handling, and down payment. It does it for all three. So it certainly seems that initially, that, like we analyzed before, that leasing is the lowest and buying new is the highest. But again, at the end of these three years, the question is, is it better to renew, so to get another lease, to sell these cars as they are, or to try to keep them for as long as possible? So to answer that question, you need to find the trade-in values of the cars. Now in the last model, I think it was kind of flawed. We just looked at an example of a car that was three years older than the one we're buying. So in this case, you would have had the 24995 number, that's three years older, and we would have put that right here. Okay, well, that's not, as, that's not the best we can do, we can do better. So one way to do this is to go to the Kelly Blue Book and I'll show you where to go. On the top right, if you go to Research Tools, there's a Car Value button right here and if you click that, they will get data on the car you're looking at but from many sources, not just one posting like we were doing. So this is what it looks like. So first you tell it what year right, you're going to. And in fact, I realize uh, this, I, on, on Canvas, I'm giving you the direct link right here to this tool. So you don't have to even go up here, but it's up here under research tools and car, tools and car values. So I'm saying, I want to know in three years what this car is worth. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the three year, three year old car and see what it's worth today. And I know I already have one of these, but I want a lot of data. So let's go to Honda. And then we're going to pick the CRV and then go to next. It's fairly quick. Watch how this works. 
it's going to give you a lot of information about it. We want to click this up here, get my car's value. Okay, so let's get the value. Lots of choices. It tells you what the lowest and highest choice will be. I believe that we have the e, um, the EX Sport Utility Four Wheel Drive. Go to next. I chose standard equipment because I didn't do any extra trims or options. That's why it saves me some time. I think blue is the color. Now, for a three-year-old car, um, you could say very good. I think that's fair. But you, uh, I shouldn't use the word fair. It's right here. I think it's a good idea to use very good or good. Excellent is like almost perfect. It's unlikely. But very good. It's likely that the car is not too badly damaged. So I'm going to pick that. And you can change that assumption. Just make sure you say what you've changed. So now it's, it's looking at data, analyzing results near us. So it's based on where you live, of course. And down here, it's giving you the range. So from 19 to 21, and it's looking at the trade-in value. If you sell it, you're going to get more for it. It's just a little bit more work to sell the car. So it's about 21 through 23. So I'm going to ask you to choose the trade-in value because uh, you want to round down as to what you can get for this car. When you trade into the dealer, you should be going to get less. So we're going to assume the worst. So in our finances, our whatever our calculations are, we get the best results because we're assuming the worst. We're assuming we won't get that much back. Okay, so I'm going to grab this link. This is important. And there's the median right there, 2637. And that's where this, this link comes from. Hit Control-K, paste that in. But then please type in the number 2637 so we can see right away what we're looking at. And hit Enter. There it is. So 2637, and before, it's interesting, I was getting something different, right? So that's changing slightly, and I wonder why that is. I don't think I changed anything, but as long as you link to it, I can see where you got the number from, right? So I can see this right here. And um, that's for uh, a 2018. What about if we bought the used car? Well, three years after that, it's not going to depreciate at the same rate, the rate of depreciation changes as the car gets older and older. So we want to go back to 2015. So I go back to my Kelly Blue Book here, go to my research tools, car values, and I'm going to pick my year. Now I'll go back to 2015, three years uh, older than the used car, so I can try to imagine that depreciation. I go over to Honda and CRV and get reviews and just repeat the process, get my car's value. It's loading. Oh, I didn't click it. And again, EX is what we're going for, not EXL or anything else. Just pay attention to the exact name of the car. Price of standard equipment, same color. And now it's a little bit old now. It would be three years old when we bought it and then three years past that. So I'm going to say good. All right. There's maybe some small issues with it. And it's estimating how much mileage it would have. You can change that. That really matters. But we're just getting a rough estimate right now. So with 82,000 miles, a 2015 Honda CRV, the training value is 13,367. Is that what I got before? No, something different. Fascinating. So I wonder why that is. 13,367. I'm going to grab the link. Here we go. Control K. 13,367. I think I got that right. There we go. Boom. Put a comma in. Looks nice. Paste that, double check that I read that, 13367, and I didn't grab it, that's okay. Here we go, 13367, and don't worry, we're almost done. Boom, enter. Now, this, this would give us all the data we need for understanding three-year cycles. Uh, so you buy the used car, after three years you sell it, you can kind of estimate, okay, maybe I could trade it in for about this much, and you get that back. So even though you paid $27,000 to have the car, you get $13,000 back when you sell it. Whereas when you bought the new car, you're getting $20,000 back when you sell it. So it was costly. It's more costly the car, but you're also getting back more for it. Now, we're trying to understand what happens in the long term. The long term. And how long is that? Well, I chose a multiple of three years. I chose nine years, but you could choose something different. Now, of course, we're leaving this all they're leaving this blank for the lease because you don't trade the lease in and get money back for it. You just kind of give it back. And there is no after nine years. We don't have data for that. So we want to go back nine. We want to see how much this car is appreciating after nine years. 
So we're going back nine years from 2021 to 2012. That's nine years, right? So I'll go here, and I'm going to go to my research tools, and I'm going to kind of grab that data. Again, it's now we're going back nine years to imagine what's going to happen. So it's going to be uh, 2012. And then the make is a Honda. And then the model is our CRV. Go to next. It's going to ask us which CRV do we have, but first I'm going to go to get my car's value. And you can read about the cars. It's fairly interesting what it has to say. So this is a little different than name, but it's the same idea. It's not the top or the bottom. It's kind of in the middle. And standard equipment. Blue is the color. And this again, this is an older car. Fair means it's pretty beat up, but I'm going to stick with good. This is all assuming that we're able to keep the car in fairly good condition. So now notice it's estimating 111,000 miles. Again, you can change that. And we're looking at 2012. And we're looking at the trade-in values 8973. 8973. So I'm going to say trade-in value after nine years is, I don't want the word link, I want the number, 8,973. There's my link. Boom. So that gives me a sense of how much I can sell that for, and I think that's exactly exactly what I got last time. And then I think you get the point. It kind of repeats the process here. You go back nine years from 2018, and look at a 2009 Honda. So this is already linked, so if I click on that, see the Kelly Blue Book is running it. So that's interesting. I, did I grab a 2010 Honda CRV? And that's, that's not accurate. So I'm glad I caught this. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to car values. I'm going to pick a 20, 2009, excuse me. And I'm going to pick a Honda. Boom. And the model is CRV. Go to next. And now I'm going to get my car's value. And don't, don't worry, we're almost done. We go to the EX, the kind of the middle model. Go to next. Standard. Blue. Good, it's an older car. It might be fair, but I'll say good. It's saying 132,000 miles now. And like I said, you can alter that. And we're going to grab the number. And then I think we have everything we need. So here it's 5295. Okay, so I go here. Oops, let me they grab that. 5295. 5,295. Delete the link, 5295, comma, boom. And then put the link in, boom. So now we're getting to the end, finally. Here, what's going on? Well, we have the total amount we paid during the loan. So for the lease, it's all of the fees uh, plus the cost per month put together. And clearly that's a lot less than if we buy it new or used. But when you buy it new or used, these trade-in values come into effect, and you can effectively get that money back towards the purchase of a new car. And the same is true uh, for a used car. You could sell it. In this case, the trade-in value would be 13367 and then you can use that difference uh, to perhaps buy another used car, and so on and so forth. And that's still true after nine years. They're, the cars still have some value, even though it's less. Now... This, this column over here, let's start here, total cost over the time of the loan. This is uh, during the loan, how much did you spend for the car after you traded in your vehicle? So I should actually write that. Total cost over the time of the loan after trade-in. Now for the lease, that won't change. It's still 15000 because you're not getting anything back. There is nothing to trade in. But here are the differences for the new and the used. And it's surprising to me that the exact breakdown, these particular cars right here, that the used car ends up costing you more than the new car. Isn't that interesting? And it's, and it's really dependent upon, of course, the values at which you can sell them for. So the trade-in value is low enough for this car, for the used, that you're getting a little bit less back, and that makes the overall cost after the trade-in a little bit higher. Now, these last two columns, I think, are particularly interesting. So here's the answer to the question. Total cost over the nine years without renewal. So if you had the car for nine years and didn't renew it every three years, what would it end up costing you? Well, it's not possible for leasing, so we leave that blank. You have to renew the lease. But for buying, for buying new, it's J3 minus L3. So here's J3, and then you subtract 
the trade in value, L3. So what you bought it for, what you paid for it when you during the loan, what you're able to trade it in for, and that is the cost over the nine years because we have this nine-year-old quote on the car. And it's 23,000, cost 23,000. But over the long term, the way the car depreciates, it turns out that after nine years, the used car is actually a little bit cheaper. It's only $21,000. Now, it's amazing if you compare these two values to the lease cost. Leasing, you have to renew it. It's $46,000 expenditure, right? Look what this does. It just takes the cost for every three years and triples it. And that's what it is. So that's a lot higher. It's over $20,000 higher than buying it new or used and holding on for, for nine years. But what if you kept renewing the, the new cars and kept, kept trading in and buying new ones, trading in and buying new ones? And then with the used cars, if you trade in and buy a used car, trade in and buy a used car, you can see how these prices add, stack up. It's kind of interesting. And this is just taking the, the total cost over the time of the loan after trading and taking this cost right here and tripling it. Right, tripling these costs. So it turns out if you were going to renew it every three years, the cheapest way to do that for this particular car with the way it depreciates is to buy new and then trade it in for this car. It's quite interesting. Whereas if you're able to keep it for nine years, the used option is the cheapest. But you should ask yourself, you know, what is what do these differences really matter to you? What's worth it? This is saving about two thousand dollars over nine years. So that's pretty close, right? So it, it can really go either way. You might have reasons for doing uh, sticking with the new car versus the used car. And leasing might still be an option because you're avoiding all the maintenance fees typically. You're renewing it every three years. Um, whereas with nine years, you, you, you can expect at least $400 on average, I say about per year after five years to fix these cars and keep them up. So there are some expenses there. Of course, leasing, it goes back and forth. Leasing is more expensive with the insurance because you'll be constantly having those new cars. Whereas here, as the cars get older, the insurance rates will also go down. But again, you know, there are different, here are the comparison of prices renewing every three years. And here are the three comparisons with where you have to renew for a lease, whereas you hold on to the car when you've bought it. And I'm curious to see what you find with the cars that you're picking and if it's the same results or is it different. All right, thanks.